Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. My name is D, and today we are checking out Sightline. Sightline is a prototype game. It was the third place winner in the VR Jam 2013, which was co-sponsored by Oculus and Indiecade. And it was originally designed for DK1 way back in 2013, and I played through it then. You can watch me playing through the original DK1 version on my DK1 right here. Um, that was my first time playing through it, so I had a lot of uh, interesting surprises while doing that. This time, I'm going to be playing through it again on my Oculus Rift Development Kit 2. The developer recently added full support for the Oculus Rift 2, including positional tracking and low persistence, among other things, and also taking advantage of the incredible contrast of the device, and I'll talk about that more when we get into it. But Suffice to say, this is a very different experience on DK2 compared to DK1, and I think a considerably better experience. Um, so, the developer of this, whose name is Tomasz Mariancic, uh, otherwise known as Fruxius, is a Czech developer who originally developed this um, pretty much um, on his own with a little bit of help from uh, some art people in just like three weeks and using a bunch of assets from the art store. He's currently building a larger team to produce a full version of this game that's hopefully going to end up on Kickstarter sooner or later. When it does, I will let you know so that you can go and back it because this game is awesome. Now without further ado, let's get into Sightline and see what DK2 brings to the table. Alright, here I am. In Sightline, I am at the main menu. It's a bit hard to tell because um, the, the main logo here, I have to face my camera in the corner in order to be looking directly at it. Um, it would be nice if they had a reset button, but um, it's not that needed in this game because once you start the game, you can rotate using your, um, using your controller. I'm going to be using my Xbox 360 controller in this. You can also control the keyboard and mouse. I just prefer the uh, controller a little bit. It's a little easier to kind of turn with as I turn like this. So I'm going to be using that. Um, this game is already amazing. Um, the low persistence is working brilliantly. Whereas before, if I turn my head like this on the main menu, everything would be blurry and illegible. And now I can actually read as I turn my head, which is really cool. And the low persistence is doing its job. Um, these numbers let you jump to any of the levels, so if you've already played the game before, you can decide what part you want to start at. Here's a little uh, stereoscopy test below me. If you look at these in one eye, they will look about the same size, but if you... Actually, the one on the right looks a little bigger. But if you look at them through both eyes, you will see that the one on the right is farther away. And they probably used this just to test the stereoscopy while they were developing the game. Um... Let me see here. So here's the history of it. Developed for Indiecade VR Jam. Won the third place in three weeks, which were very difficult. Uh, keyboard or 360 controller optimized for VR headset. And this is the original unmodified prototype that was submitted. It's only been um, upgraded for DK2, like upgraded to the new version of the SDK. And there are hints in the readme file if you get stuck. I won't get stuck because I've played through it before. Uh, there's the main developer, Tomasz Majacic. And music is, um, the music and voice samples were from other people. Uh, they were probably people that the developer knows in real life. I don't know who they are. Uh, Andrzej Polta and Julian uh, Sepek. And these are, um, you should, if you like this game, you should like it on Facebook. You should um, keep an eye on the full version. If we keep turning, there's this blue guy over here. No fruits here yet. What? Fruits? What? I wasn't expecting there to be fruits. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but that's that's okay, dude. And uh, what what sides have I not checked? If I turn all the way around, that's just that text again. Oh, there's stuff above me. Nothing up here, but you could try or buy other games. Oh, okay. So he's made a bunch of 2D games, too. Those are cool. Yeah, so if you like uh, novel mechanics, those are definitely cool things to check out. Without further ado, let's uh, get off the screen. So I think the screen is awesome just because there's stuff all around you and because the contrast in DK2 is so much higher on the screen. I feel like I'm floating in the middle of an, a black void and it's just 
like I'm locked in a closet or something. And these red letters right here, they actually do a great job of demonstrating um, the screen door effect of DK2 at its very worst. Um, because they are pure, pure red, that means they have no green in them. And so you can distinctly see the diamond pattern on the red letters, um, especially when you're you're just staring right at it. And it's it's very noticeable. It's kind of like a, a fabric or a little honeycomb, and um, and it and it makes the edges of the letters a little bit ragged. Um, so there's definitely a screen door here, and this is where it's most noticeable. Although it's still still not too bad. Um, it's it's not like it doesn't render the text illegible or anything like that. It's still very clear. Like that letter B, I can still read that just fine. It just doesn't look nearly as good as the letter A there. Anyway, enough time with the menu screen. Let's get started. Um, spacebar. Spacebar to start. Oh, wow. A philosopher once asked, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? If there's a table in the kitchen and you look away from it, is it still there when you're not looking? Look at these things. Whoa, table. Quantum physics tells us that the universe is volatile. Particles can come into existence and vanish back into nothingness as long as we can't observe this happening. So? But if you're not looking, anything can happen here. There are laws. Laws of physics that bind reality and ensure that your observations are always consistent. When you look back, the table will still be there. This is so trippy. This never gets less trippy. Things are just moving all over the place when I'm not looking. That giant chair, I swear to God it was there. And that whole intro sequence with this black, this black void and the particles was so much, just so much higher contrast and it was really like floating in a void. Like I felt like I was in the middle of the night floating in the sky while fireworks were going off around me or something. Like little fireworks floating through the sky. Little embers from a fire. It's, it's amazing. And everything just looks... The positional tracking is fully working. Everything feels super solid. And... And it still shocks me just as much as the first time I played to look away from something and see it and see stuff appearing where it wasn't before. Hello, squiggly thing. Hello. I can but get a look down at myself here. damage to these laws? If the laws were no longer in place, the moment you looked back... Anything could be... Whoa! There. There's a door. Okay. I now have the ability to walk around. Which is good, because it means I can show you whatever I feel like now. So here are some cool blocks. You can actually see your shadow at this point. The shadow is pretty low resolution, uh, which is a lot more visible on the um, DK2. But that is my shadow. I am a uh, squiggly black blob thing. And I have um, those these uh, two eyes floating above the blob. And it's actually pretty cool. It looks like the eyes have... Um, been integrated with the positional tracking so they move as I lean around so that's pretty cool and I can walk up to this block I can look in close at it uh, the positional tracking having a little bit of trouble as I get super close to my desk but it's otherwise doing quite well ah it's gone stupid blocks that block was my friend was it you tree tree it's kind of interesting to walk up through this tree because you can see that the leaves are just this like these flat polygons of transparent textures and I can get super close ah my face is in the tree stick a needle in my eye okay 
I'm gonna look at this log here. It's big, it's heavy, it's wood. Kinda poke my body on it. Ah! Hit my controller. There we go. That just, that looks weird. Feels like my body's made out of, like, liquid or something, and it's just poking inside it. Oh, I can actually walk through the tree. Okay. No bounding box on this. Whatever. That's still pretty cool, just to get a close look at things that I could not get a close look at before. Hey, door. Like, look at this. Look at this. I can just stare right at this instruction thingy. Stick my head right through it. This is so cool. And when I look up at the sky, I can still see just that dark, dark void and all those little colored dots. And it's so pretty. I feel like I could just lie down in this demo and look up at that sky forever. Some of the dots look like uh, little red, green, and blue dots because of the chromatic aberration not being corrected quite correctly, especially when I look straight up. But that's okay. Alright. We gotta get a move on. Let's walk through this door. Whoa! This is the story of how these laws are broken. Whoa. Okay, that is super big. That is really, really big. Oh, you can see all the dots floating next to the door now. And that floaty light thing. What is with that floaty light thing? It gets smaller as I get closer to it. Huh. Okay, run away then. I'm gonna go get in this spiral tower elevator thing. I'm gonna get in it. Alright, wait a minute, that tree was... How's the tree back? Never mind. Let's just get in the elevator. Whoa! One moment, okay. you might find yourself next to an unfallen tree. Whoa! Whoa, this the is disorienting. Second, you're in a vast forest. Wow. Whoa, where'd all those come from? And this elevator gives me a lot more sense of just disoriented, dizzy spinning. Or perhaps the word big would be more fitting here. Giant trees and birds. Awesome. Hey, birds. Say hi to the birds. Yo, birds. What's up? And we're here. Remember to observe the world <sighs> around you closely. Look for anything that might help you proceed further. Okay, that made me dizzy, because that elevator, um, the way, like in the DK1, I didn't get dizzy at all in that part, but in the DK2, with it spinning around and, and feeling so solid, I really felt like it was spinning me around and starting to get me a little dizzy, which is actually impressive, because, you know, I'm not prone to VR sickness at all. I have very strong VR resistance based on how much stuff I've played. But in that spinny elevator, I was still feeling like, like I could fall over because of how dizzy I was getting. That is really, really cool. Let's check out some of these objects. Hello, Red Cube. I don't like you. Let's go see your friend, Red Sphere. Whoa, I jumped there for a second. Okay, Red Sphere, how you doing? Oh, I can't get... Can I lean down to get a closer view of the Red Sphere? Not really. Let's go see Golden Cube. Ooh, nice reflection on the side here. That is cool. Looks like an environment map or something. Or is that real-time reflections? Yeah, that looks real-time. Nice. Okay. And I can just, I can lean down close to the queue. I can look at either side of it, get a good view of it. And I could not do this in the original sight line at all. And I can, of course, look up, look down. Whoa, where'd you come from, Cylinder? Hello. And you can see the low resolution of my shadow when I walk right up to it. Those are my eyes. And it's back to a cube. And now it's a sideways pill. Whee! Can I roll it? I guess not. What happens if I just can... Oh, there's a glass here. Okay, can't go through the glass. Check out those birds. 
I feel like I almost need two videos because I'm just staring at everything. The DK2, it just makes feel... Everything feels so much more like... Like, in DK1, like, I was like... I was surprised when things changed when I looked away. But in this, it's like, it feels so much more solid and real that when things change, I'm like, okay, what the fuck, that's not... That's not natural. It really, it just doubles the freak out. Whoa. Nice. Okay. And what's over here? Looks like just a let. Whoa. Okay, I am high up. I am super high up. I don't like this one bit. Let's let's go ahead and just try and take a drop. See what happens. Whoa! Ah! Ah! Okay then. Anything could be there. Oh god, I have to ride the elevator again? You know what, that's fine. That's fine. I don't mind getting dizzy once more. This is the story of how these laws are broken. Let me up. Whoa, okay. Moment, you might find yourself next to an unfallen tree. Okay, it's not so bad if I back against... Whoa, it's still it's still making me kind of dizzy. Whoa. The next second, you're in a vast forest. That I am. Go check it out. This is so cool. Like, this isn't the kind of dizzy where I feel like VR sickness. This is just the kind of dizzy where this thing is spinning me around. Or perhaps the word big would be more fitting here. Oh, these birds are just flying... Ah, right by my head. Watch out, birds! You don't want to crash into me. Why don't they crash into the elevator? Whatever. Birds. Remember to observe the world around you closely. Alright. Look for anything that might help you proceed further. So, this puzzle involves these things. Last time I played, I didn't actually figure out how they work. Um, I just kind of lucked out. I, I tried random things until I accidentally solved the puzzle. So I think the way it works is that there's a green light over there, so I think if I make both this one and that one green, I think that's what I need to do. Okay, that one's green. I need to keep it in my sight so it doesn't change until I get the other one in my sight. Oh, I haven't gotten close to it yet. I need to activate it first. Okay. Okay, it's activated. All right. There we go. Whoa! Oh god. No, 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 no. Stop moving. Stop moving the platform. Ah! I really feel like I'm gonna fall over while this thing is moving like this. I want to grab onto something for support, but there's nothing to grab. Okay. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Also, those, those two colored things just vanished when I looked away. That's curious. So last time I was playing a lot with these things, I later discovered from the developer that they are actually doodads and they don't do anything, they're just there to play with. They do change their appearance when you look away, but that's literally all they do. So they're just to play with. The circles on the wall are actually how you solve the puzzle. And I believe I need more green, so let's see what I can do here. Alright, got more green. One more. But sometimes, not looking, even for just a brief moment, might open up new possibilities. Alright. Let's turn around then. Gotta not look. Not looking. I'm not looking. Oh, come on. Okay. Because gonna... if you're not looking, things can change. New paths might open, even if they're just Whoa. wibbly wobbly ones. Okay. Time for a wibbly wobbly bridge. This game's gotten me pretty dizzy already, so I'm not sure how I feel about going wibbly wobbly on the bridge, but. Gotta keep moving forward. The bridge is really cool because I can go right up to the rope. I can, like, lean over the rope and look down. That is lots of fun.
And I can put my face into the rope too. This is just a perfect place in this app to try out positional tracking. Whoa! Okay, bridge is starting to wobble. Take it easy. Take it. Ah! Take it easy. Okay. Any of you watching this in your DK2 might find this part a bit unpleasant. You're just gonna have to deal with it. Hello, Orby thing. This is so cool. Okay. What now? Well, it looks like I have to get to that town over there. Okay. I think I remember how to get there. Ah! One advantage of these pods is that they can be re-wiggled around as needed. Okay, let's re-wiggle. Whoa. Check out that physics. Being able to watch physics like that and move my head with it in the DK2 and have the low persistence just makes it so much better and so much... Whoa! Hey, bird. <laughs> so much cooler. Interestingly, I was looking at how much black space is on the screen of DK2, and you guys can tell this if you saw my DK1 videos that DK2 goes pretty much all the way to the left, right, top, and bottom edges of the screen. And that makes it... And that makes it um, use the pixels of the screen much more efficiently, because DK1 had quite a lot of... Ah! Black space. And black space is just pixels you're not using. So that means that the angular resolution, the pixels per degree of DK2, is actually higher than the mirror resolution upgrade would suggest, because you're also getting a benefit from the decreased amount of black space. So the resolution is, is quite a bit improved. Um, it has the pentile arrangement, but the pentile actually looks quite nice, like I've said before. This tree is so pretty from underneath. All the birds and the shaking and the leaves falling down. Okay. So a lot of people in my last video asked me about um, field of view. This is something people have been talking about a lot on Reddit. And long story short, um, don't, don't put DK2 close to your face. If you dial the dial on the side all the way in, hey birds, if you dial it in all the way to so that it's as close as possible to your eyes, then you will be able to see the edges of the screen inside the DK2. And the horizontal field of view is actually about the same as DK1, but a lot of people just find it unpleasant to be able to see the edges of the screen because they look kind of like sharp black edges, and they prefer to have the edges um, close to their eye and more blurry. And the way you do that is you move it farther away so that the lenses will be what's limiting your field of view instead of the screen. That's all you have to do. If you adjust it to the right point, then you will still have about the same field of view, but you will have a more aesthetically pleasing uh, boundary on your field of view. I don't have a problem with it. I am very happy with DK2's field of view. I think there's always room for improvement, but this is still... Whoa! Oh god, what's happening? Okay, let's keep moving. <laughs> Get up off this thing. Okay. So. Oh, we're, we're going up. Okay. Whee! So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the field of view. I think it could be better. I think it would add to the experience and make it, um, make it feel a bit less constricted if there were more field of view, but um, I'm, I'm perfectly happy with them doing that later. This is already just miles better in terms of the field of view than anything that's come before. It's not like looking through a window, it's, it's like wearing goggles, and that's just like with DK1. It's like wearing ski goggles or a diving mask, and, and that's, that's not that bad. We, I, I ski in the real world while wearing skiing goggles, and I don't feel like I'm looking through a window. I, in fact, I tend to forget about them after a little while. So that's very much what happens with the Rift, uh, DK1 and DK2. All right, last point across the bridge. Let's go. I feel like this video is gonna be like. Ah! But then you what? turn back. My bridge. What happened to my bridge? It's broke. 
Oh man, what am I gonna... Whoa! Hello? Uh... So apparently, I'm now in the house. You already are where you were heading. Often, in the face of danger, we can't help but look around in order to find its source. Oh shit. Everything's on fire. Guys, guys, I, I don't want to burn. I don't want to burn in the fire. Someone get me out. Get me out. Uh, what's going on with this wall? That doesn't feel right. Okay, I, I really don't want to catch on fire. I really like that sequence where the first time it did that it really just shocked the hell out of me. That I was going across the bridge and then the bridge broke and then it was like, yeah, you're already there. Congrats. Oh, what's this? Can I go that way? It doesn't look like it. Okay, there's got to be a way out of here. I can't remember the way, though. Oh, wow. Look at this dark corner. See how the light is playing across it here? I really feel like I'm in a dark room, and there's, like, something... There's, like... There's, like, little fireworks going off behind me or something. This is so weird. But sometimes the button your eyes can be the key to survive. Oh shit! Oh shit! I'm not gonna look! I'm not gonna look! Don't look! Don't look! I'm hiding! I'm hiding in the corner! I'm just gonna hide! I'm just gonna hide! It won't be able to burn me if I hide! Oh god. What's happening? What's happening? I shouldn't look! Ah! This is like Sodom and Gomorrah. If I look back, I'll turn into a pillar of salt or burn up in an explosion. Okay, come on. How do I get out of here? No. 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 Oh no. Oh no. I don't like this. And when it's finally gone. Whoa. You can safely go to sleep. Whoa, total darkness. What? this world, everything is fleeting. Sometimes, interrupting your line of sight can make your goal disappear right in front of your nose. Okay, so I made it through the fiery part. For a minute I was immersed in total darkness, like I was locked in a closet or something. It was so dark. I cannot begin to describe how dark the, the darks are in this. Like if I walk up to this dark corner, it's just it just feels so much, so much darker than in DK1. There's no, like, gray backlight or anything. Okay, so now I'm in this place. If I recall correctly, is this a, is this a alcoholic drink vending machine? That looks like a wine glass. How do you have a vending machine for, never mind, never mind. Okay, there's the clock. The clock makes loud sounds to remind you that it is important. It's also kind of huge. The clock looks like it's like a meter in diameter. Okay. This is so cool to explore environments with positional tracking. But if you find the right spot to observe your destination, you can gain better understanding of its volatile nature. Secret doorway! Let's go check it out. Okay, so those were some hints. The door is closed again now. Oh, there's a door again. Okay, I'm gonna close this door. And you'll notice when I look away from the clock, the time changes on the clock. And I'll show you more of that when I get over there. Foxes! Adorable foxes! They have nothing to do with anything. They're just here. Decoration. So now when I come over to this side, the door is open because I closed it on the other side. And this clock, like I said, changes time each time I look at it. Kind of randomly, I think. That'll become important in a minute. But right now I want to go into that door over there. So I close the door on this side, then I go around. Half-Life 3? 
Confirmed. Release me. Release me. It says release me. Release me. Wrong side. This is just a little Easter egg. Nothing to see here. Okay. Let's go in there again. The other side is where we actually need to go. Oh, look at that lamp. Oh, nice. I like that lamp. The way it's just dangling and kind of rocking. Again, I really wish that when I look at a bright light source like this, that the light could actually hurt my eyes. I know that sounds stupid, but I, I want it to feel like I'm staring into a light when I'm staring into a light. What's this now? Just a blank wall. That's not helpful. Okay, if I recall correctly, there's a way to get in there. I think I have to change... Hmm. I think I have to change the clock? Or something else? I'm gonna figure this out. I should be able to remember from the last time I did it. There are little dust particles floating all about. Dust particles are a big thing in VR demos because uh, they provide this very strong stereoscopic effect. And that can be useful sometimes. Just to give just to give kind of a, a stronger sense of 3D in these environments that may not necessarily be um, the kind that have lots of objects close up to your face otherwise. More foxes. Oh, and the pictures changed. I didn't notice that before. Now it's football. Now it's empty. Now it's gone. Football? Gone. This is a snack machine. Now there are two snacks. Oh my god. I didn't notice most of these things on my last playthrough. There's so much subtlety in this game. Now they're lamps. What? What? Now it's a trash can? You know what? Th I could do this all day. Sometimes flipping between two states repeatedly can change other things. Okay. You look much better than before. Oh. Oh, it's green now. It's green now. And it's gone. <sighs> okay. Okay. I turned it green, then I closed it. Now it's open again, and it's still green. So far, so good. Open hours. Yesterday, closed. Today, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Tomorrow, 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. What the hell kind of hours are those? Open in the afternoon, and also other days in the evening and midnight? Whatever. Whatever. 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. That wall, when it gets right in my face, is mildly disconcerting. Kind of cool to be able to lean around right next to the wall like this, though. And I can punch my face through the wall to do my wall. Whoa, is that money over there? Do I, do I want the money? I, I should... I should ignore the money. Okay. Money's always a trap. It's counting on me to be greedy. I need to get in the 3 to 6 range. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh boy, I remember this part. I'm not sure how I'm gonna feel about this in DK2. Oh boy. You can see the lights flickering in here. Be wary of this part if you're epileptic. Close your eyes. This is not the flickering due to the DK2. The flickering of the DK2 is invisible to me. I actually can't see it at all. Okay, there's a then, pit. In the face of danger, with no means of escape, that moment can feel like a whole eternity. Ah. When you look up, you'll ah. see spikes of Oh no, the door's gone. The door's gone. You look down and see a deadly pit blocking your yeah. way. A shovel? Why is there a shovel? Why would there be a giant shovel? Look up, spikes. Look down, oh god. Pit. Oh god. Look up again and find that the spikes what? are now a fan of reasonable breeze. Then you what? look down and find that the pit was never really there. What? 
I wonder what would have happened if I tried to walk in the pit before. Okay. So I'm all right, thanks to that fan of reasonable breeze. Is that a is that a bump map or a normal map on that thing? I can't tell. It looks all right from here, as long as I don't get super super close to it. Like from here, it looks really flat. Anyway, got these red alarm lights going on. See you later, spikies. But then you have to return. Wrong way. Oh, look at how detailed this art is. The wrong way art. I like that. Okay, I need to go back. What? That? Oh god, more spikes. I don't want more spikes. I don't want more spikes. And you find many things that were never there. Spiky, deadly things. And inconveniently placed walls. Instructed by an invisible architect. No, 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 no. But then no. he changes his mind and he runs away. No, 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 no. Ah! Oh, shit. Okay, well, I don't think I actually got crushed by the spikes last time, but this time I did. So that was but then, entertaining. But in the face of danger, with no means of escape, that moment can feel like a whole eternity. When you look up and uh, see spikes of doom hurtling at you. Yeah, so it turns out the pit was there. I fell in the pit. It is real. There's nothing but imaginary then, about it. In the face it. of danger, with no means of escape, that moment can feel like a whole eternity. When you look up, you'll see spikes of doom hurtling at you. You look down and see a deadly pit blocking your way. That was pretty deadly, yes, I agree. Also, why was there no shovel this time? Look up, spikes, look down, pit, look up again and find that the oh. spikes are now a fan of reasonable breeze. Then you look down and find that the pit was never really there. Okay, this time I need to get away from those spikes. They're not gonna crush me again. I can deal with this. But then you have to return. All right, let's do this. Can I make my way over there, or am I gonna have to double back or something? And you find many things that were never there: spiky, deadly things, and inconveniently placed walls constructed by an invisible architect. Then he changes his oh, mind thank God. He thank God. Away. Thank God. <sighs> okay. 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 I know I played this before, but this is so stressful. Still wrong way, but come closer. Okay. Sure. <laughs> More than once, in fact. This is the wrong way now. Then what's the... Oh. Okay. This game is fucking with my head. Oh, oh, this is pretty. Look at that pretty night sky. Wow. What are those little... Oh, I just walked... When I... I just... So I passed through some kind of barrier here. When I'm in this part, it looks like there's kind of a, a gray or green film over the sky. It doesn't look totally dark. But as soon as I pass through here, suddenly the sky is pitch black. Black as night. Totally black. I guess that the developer implemented it so certain areas would have a uh, workaround to eliminate the true black smearing effect. Or maybe it's this fog that's doing it? Either way, it's really cool to be able to look up at that pure, pure black sky. Often, things can seem different from alternate perspectives. A dead end becomes a path simply by adjusting your point of view. It's me! I can see myself. At last. I, I look like a creepy blob thing, as you can see. And I have positional tracking. Pretty sweet. 
I could not do this in the original. In the original, your eyes were perched atop your body and could not move even a little bit. All right. Whoa. Hi there, me. Oh, look. I can see true black smearing right now on the pupils. From the pupils to the iris, I see... When I, when I move like this, a very clear blurring effect from the pupil to the iris. It's kind of a dark purple or blue color. So that's true black smearing, and that's what Oculus is currently in the process of fixing. It'll be nice to see how the fix turns out. This area has the pure black for the sky, so you can also see it in other parts of the area. Can I lean it? Whoa! Ah! I'm clipping into myself. Okay, this is trippy. This is super... Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. I don't want to do that anymore. Okay, if I remember correctly, I died like a billion times in this part. Oh, look. The gate's open. Ah! Oh, I have to go backwards. Yeah, when you look at the gate, it closes. When you look away from the gate, it opens again. That's you how... You moved to the dead from the dead end. You're almost there. Oh shit! Ah! Yeah, that's the thing that killed me like a million times Foster, last time. Things can seem different from alternate perspective. You removed the dead from the dead end. You're almost there. Ow! Okay. Okay, I'm gonna remember how to Foster, do this. Things can seem different from alternate perspective. It's been a while since I've played this game. Dead from the dead end. You're almost there. Okay, I'm just not gonna look. Just not gonna look. Huh. Apparently looking away from danger actually helps. I'm like an ostrich sticking my head in the sand. Whatever. Oh, hey, there's a mirror. Here's a squiggly guy. Hello, squiggly guy. Hello. I'm squiggly too, did you know? We should make squiggly babies. Alright. Let's go. Okay. You've learned that things change when you don't observe them. But sometimes, just sometimes, you have to keep looking, and they'll change right in front of your eyes. All right, here comes the final part. This time, we have to look at the mirror to keep it moving. Okay, I don't remember what angle I want it at. I think I want it facing the door. That's where I'm gonna try. Okay. Okay, that didn't seem helpful. There's that circle over there. Is that where I want it? Do I want it pointing at the green circle? Okay, I don't think I want, I think, so it's making this yellow half circle. And I want it green. I want it green. Okay, it's turning green. I just have to keep looking, just keep looking. This is now truly the Whoa! End. Although your time here was brief, we hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye. We made it. We made it to the end. So yeah, I think I have... Uh, I don't even have to come out to talk about this because I've given a bunch of impressions. This has been a pretty long episode. And I just... I really think that this game really lends itself well to DK2. That powerful contrast in the, in the super black dark regions. This is all the assets from the asset store they use. This game used a lot of uh, off-the-shelf assets. Uh, 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 Tomas is, I believe, still looking for a graphics person. And yeah, this game, it, it makes amazing use of contrast. The, the use of positional tracking and low persistence really add to the solidness of the world. And the more real the world feels, the more it freaks you out when your sense of object persistence or uh, is, is no longer respected. And... And um, 
and yeah, it's it's a still it's an even better experience than it was on DK one, and I'm I'm just really really happy with it. And yeah, you can jump back to any of those scenes by pressing those buttons now. And um, yeah, with that, I'm going to leave off. I um, one other thing I want to tell you is that both me and um, uh, Fruxius, who is the developer of this particular demo, uh, hang out a lot on the uh, hash Oculus IRC chat room on Freenode IRC, where you can come chat with us and other Oculus Rift enthusiasts if you want to chat in real time. So if you want to check that out, I've put a link to it in the description. There is a, um, a website that will let you log in with any name you want, and then you can start chatting right away. Easy peasy. Um, let me know what you think of, of Sightline. Um, I, I think it's amazing. I can't wait to see a, a, the new full demo. I wonder what kind of new innovations they're going to do. Um, there is currently a small demo that the developer is working on, which is based on the same concept as Sightline, except you it's not like a full game where you move around. You just hang out in one place and watch the scene kind of change around you. And I think that'll be really cool. And that is all for today. Um, so Dolphin VR um, has come out for DK2, which will allow me to play... Um, allow me to play GameCube games like my uh, Wind Waker series that I was in the middle of. So I'm hoping that I can get that working and then I'll be able to do an episode continuing my Wind Waker series inside DK2 and I'll be able to compare it to my DK1 experience so far. And I hope it'll be much better because um, hopefully, because um, I was using Tridep 3D before and it had a ton of black space and it had quite a lot of bad distortion and I feel like if the new Dolphin is based on the SDK like it should be, that I'll have a much better experience. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that later. But for now, Definitely check out Sightline and keep an eye on Sightline for the future because it's going to be coming back. And I will see you guys next time. Everybody have a great every day.